Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, again, this is uh, Khalid Saleh. We have a webinar that has six different uh, case uh, studies, uh, lots of information. Um, so uh, we're gonna just run quickly through the introduction. Uh, please, if you'd like, join the conversation. You can tweet at us at Invesp. We have team members who are looking at Twitter. You can use the hashtag InvestCRO. And uh, joining me, my partner, uh, co-founder at Invesp, uh, Ayash Shakeri. She runs all of our conversion optimization projects, 400 plus conversion, successful conversion optimization projects. With that, uh, let's jump in. Uh, let's jump right away into it. Ayat, it's all yours. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're going to start right into our case study. So this company actually started out as a kiosk in a California mall and now has grown to be one of the undisputed leaders of quality cell phone accessories at discounted prices. So we're actually going to be talking a lot about shopping cart abandonment today. Uh, this particular company uh, had high cart abandonment rates. The visitors did not proceed to the checkout and instead navigated to other pages on the website. So those were the issues that the, this uh, particular website had. We developed a hypothesis based on the data that we collected. Adding elements to enhance trust and incentives will increase buyer momentum, thus increasing conversion. So based on that, this is what we came up with in terms of the designs. So first, you're going to see the control. Here's the control. You'll notice that there is a top navigation there. There are trust icons in many different places, actually. Uh, there's something that they also use, which is called Buy Safe. Again, more of a you know trust icon as well, um, and uh, two set of credibility indicators. So if you if you notice, there are the trust icons that are no, near the proceed to secure checkout and at the bottom of the page. Variation one. What we did here was we removed the top nav. We removed the Buy Safe. We added a banner, free shipping plus 90 day hassle free guarantee, and we kept the credibility indicators in one place rather than in both places. Variation two, we removed the buy safe, the top nav is still in place. We added the banner as well, the free shipping plus 90 day hassle free guarantee, and the credibility indicators near the CTA are also in one place. Then this is variation three. What we did here was we removed the buy safe, the top nav still in place, we added the banner, and then what we added instead of the credibility indicators is we had a assurance center in the right nav. Now, I just do want to say that this particular test had more than these three variations that we ran, uh, just so that you can keep that in mind when you're looking at this test, but we selected kind of the top uh, performing variations just so that you can kind of look at them and, and see the difference between what we presented. Here is a side-by-side -side look. You have uh, the control, variation one, variation two, and variation three. So this is a question to the audience because again, we do like this to be as interactive as possible. So please share your feedback and let us know what you think. Do you think it was variation one, two, or three that won? Okay, so we are gonna be launching a poll over here. And uh, as you see over here, so there will be Four different designs, design one being the original, two, three, four. Uh, let's go ahead and launch the poll and uh, we'll give the attendees, uh, our webinar attendees, a chance to answer. And I'll go ahead and uh, read some of your, your comments and uh, the answers are coming, uh, are coming through. Uh, if you have any comments, you can use the, chat, the question, the Q&A uh, feature on uh, GoToWebinar to answer. And I see 33% of you uh, voted. 50% uh, of you voted. Uh, it, seems, uh, it seems the answers are split between design one and design three, between design one and design three. Uh, with that, let's, let's give people 67% voted. So I see more and more vote. Uh, oh, well, the results are, are split 50-50 between, between, uh, between design one and design, uh, design three. So we'll go ahead and close the poll and add if you want to uh, show us. All right, so the winner is, and you can give yourself a pat on the back, design one with a 10% increase in website conversion. Now, I do want to note that, of course, this is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the webinar, but because it is a cart page, of course, 
uh, when you have an increase in conversion, you're going to see that in your bottom line uh, directly. So a 10% does mean kind of a high, a higher uh, revenue return uh, in terms of, of um, you know, just the, the revenue that comes in. Uh, th this is sort of interesting because uh, I know when we post these webinars, um, and by the way, this is also something, tr trying to get people to sign up for the webinars. I know that when we post a webinar and we say 50, 60, 70% increase in conversion rates, you, the attendance just shoot up, shoots up the roof. I mean, sometimes we, we, we get close to uh, max seat capacity. And when you say, well, 10% uplift, people are, are wondering, well, 10%, I can, I can get that really easily. However, uh, 10% of the car page means, uh, at least in, in our analysis over the last 10 years, uh, means tremendously more than a 30 or a 40% uh, the, uh, the main homepage. Exactly. All right, so the results here, as you can see, the variation one has, um, I guess, a 12% increase, variation two, and variation three had an uplift as well, but it was not, of, of course, as significant as variation one. And the confidence level there is 93.1%. So this is also another comment. Uh, lots of people always ask us, uh, what kind of confidence level do you go for? We go typically for a 95% confidence level, 98%, uh, 99% confidence levels. Um, but 93, if the experiment ran for long enough time, is definitely excellent, is high up there. Um, and on this, for this particular customer, uh, it's, it's really had a huge impact on their bottom line. All right, excellent. So just digging deeper, the cart page is a point in which buyer momentum is high. Cart abandonment is many times due to the fact that anxieties surface right before the purchase and they aren't met, the anxieties aren't met and immediately mitigated. So this is important to kind of recognize that we really need to consider that once the customer enters into the cart and ready for checkout, their anxieties are going to be high. So you want to make sure you address that as much as possible. So two, two factors over here uh, are at, at play. Do you find that sometimes buyer momentum, I, I guess our goal in conversion optimization at the cart page is to increase buyer, buyer momentum, uh, increase that, that scent, and that you know, is, is you know, kind of on the, on the negative side, what's, uh, what's really reducing it is the, uh, the different, uh, different anxieties, different FUDs, fears, uncertainties, and doubts that visitors have. So it's kind of a, a battle between the two, and whichever wins, uh, it, you know, then you have a conversion, or you don't have a conversion. And you have high card abandonment rates, and I think every e-commerce company can complain about high e uh, card abandonment rates. So three methods, three methods that we can that we have from our methodology, from our conversion framework that we came up with, uh, that directly impact cart abandonment reduction, and keeping that buyer momentum high are increasing page sent through decluttering, increasing trust, value, and urgency on the page through contributing elements and language, and mitigating fuds through a stepped process. So we're going to kind of go through these three different points. Um, and I think with card abandonment, there are other things that we do address, but we selected kind of the three top ones so that we can discuss them today. Uh, so here is the control. We're going to kind of talk about uh, the test that we just looked at. The top navigation, it's adding clutter. Uh, it's adding uh, bounce around and defunnelization of the visitor. You have these visitors that are ready to convert. They're at the cart page, and you're giving them the chance to opt out. And we really recognize this with a lot of our different customers that this is an issue. This is a problem that a lot of our, uh, you know, uh, visit our, our partners are facing when they have top nav and left nav, letting the visitor kind of leave the cart page. So, so I add defunnelization. <laughs> uh, we're inventing new words. Every once in a while, we, we do invent new words. These at the are best. our terms. <laughs> uh, what, do, what do you mean by defunnelization? So leaving, <laughs> leaving the funnel, leaving the funnel and opting out, either exiting uh, and, and uh, abandoning the cart altogether or uh, bouncing around to another page. And so although credibility indicators are present twice on the page, sometimes if you have it too much, you can increase anxieties. Customers are thinking, well, what do you, you know, what, why do I need to have buy safe? What's going on? What kind of a company are you? So these are things that you just have to be weary about. Too much can really be, it can be detrimental to so, you. So yeah, the thing, that, the thing that you're trying to do is you're trying to calm the fears, uh, the doubts that visitors have, but if you do it way, way too much, 
people it just backfires and people are saying you know what you you're just crossing that that you know that line uh, and i'm starting to feel uncomfortable and maybe in this particular case that's what happened where our, our uh, uh, the our partner felt that okay well we're going to give our visitors lots and lots of assurances and at the end like you know their their visitors really abandoned and said oh hold on we don't want to deal with this goodbye and good luck exactly so variation one, as you can see, the page is cleaned up tremendously. There's decluttering. We remove the outlets from, a critical, from this critical point where, uh, you know, this is a critical point in the conversion process. We reduce the credibility icons and place them in strategic locations only just to enhance trust because it is important to have these icons. But, of course, you want to make sure that they're placed strategically. And then adding a banner which offers urgency through incentivizing the offer and still maintaining the value and trust is important. Um, I, you know, I always tell Khaled I'm really big on banners if they're placed correctly, if the language is correct, because a lot of times they can be useful and they can really enhance that you know, customer trust and, and confidence. Yeah, we're, we're actually discussing some of the uh, upcoming webinar topics that we have. And I think we'll have a couple of webinars about just banners. Uh, because used correctly, we see tremendous increase, increases in conversion rates because uh, if you use them correctly, then you can uh, use them to enhance trust, value proposition. Uh, address you can the personas. Address the personas. I mean, there, there's just a lot that you can do with banners, but also we've seen banners used incorrectly and uh, reduce conversion rates. Uh, so there will be there will be upcoming webinars about this, and uh, we always mention to our webinar attendees <clears throat> if there is a particular topic that you are interested in in listening to, in hearing about, in watching case studies about. Feel free to contact us. Just mention it to us. Uh, we've done tremendous amount of testing in the last ten years. Uh, so most likely you mention it. Uh, we've we've done it, and we have a case study that we can use more than one case study, put something together. We're always looking for new uh, for new ideas. I know this year we're focused on uh, mobile to, to a good extent because um, everybody's just talking uh, talking about mobile. But we're going to be doing a lot also in terms of having international websites. Uh, th there's just lots and lots of things that we're going to be testing. So Excellent. <clears throat> so here we're going to be talking a little bit about the conversion rate correlation factor. So one of the things, and, and this is something that most people don't understand and struggle with. Lots of times you conduct an A-B test, you conduct a multivariate test, and the testing software shows you that your conversion rate, or as based on the result, and you've done a test from, let's say, the home page all the way to the order confirmation. So it's a macro conversion. It's a full conversion for an e-commerce website. And the testing software tells you that your conversion rate based on, or the winning variation increases your conversion by 40%. Well, you look at your bottom line, you look at the numbers, and you see, well, no, my sales increased only by 4 or 5%. Where did the remaining 35% disappear? And that's really what our research has shown us. There is a conversion rate correlation factor. Not uh, the conversion rate uh, increase on a particular page does not correspond one to one to the overall websites, the overall increase in the website conversion rate. So the home page, for example, uh, if you increase the conversion rate there, then you see on average anywhere between 22 to 34% increase in the overall website conversion rate versus on a card page, you're getting close to 85%. So when we talk about a 10% or 12% increase on a card page, that means your overall website conversion rate would have gone up by close to 8% versus uh, the same numbers don't, don't play the same way on a home page or on category pages. Exactly. And that's why a 10% on the cart page, just as our customer uh, experienced, actually had that impact. Um, so here are some key terms. The conversion correlation factor on a cart or checkout page is very high. Buyer momentum is high at a cart page level. However, visitor anxieties are equally high. Sometimes what we may perceive as elements that add trust and confidence actually only increase anxieties. And the placement of credibility icons is key to increase conversion. All right, so we talked about the three things that can increase or the three points that can increase buyer momentum in the cart page. Uh, the first one is increasing page sent through decluttering. Now, there are four, thing, four main points under this. Remove or obstructing elements, reduce the number of buttons, offer a clear path to the next step, and consider removing exit points. 
All right. So uh, based on that, I have another case study actually for you. This is a tile e-commerce store cart page. The cart abandonment was unusually high, and page the page had many competing elements on it. Now, lots of times people ask us, what's an average cart abandonment uh, rate? Uh, what we see on average is anywhere between 60 to 70 percent. So we say 67 percent, 65 to 67 percent is the average that we see in the industry. Um, many companies that talk to us come within, within that range. The highest uh, cart abandonment rate I think I've seen was around 94, 95% abandonment rate, tremendously high. Um, and needless to say, it was for an item that was expensive, uh, jewelry, very expensive jewelry. So people were very doubtful about buying it online. Uh, best cart abandonment rate I think I've seen, uh, and after lengthy optimization, I've seen it go down to close to the 30% uh, percent abandonment rate. And that's a huge difference because if you're starting a 60% abandonment rate and then you go down to 30% abandonment rate, you are almost doubled your, your sales as a result. Absolutely. So here we have the Tile e-commerce store cart page. Here's the control. And so we can look at the control. We see that their banner looked like two buttons. It doesn't really look like a banner. It's not a consistent message there. And the CTAs are in very close proximity to each other, as you can see. And the page is just very busy overall. So all of these factors can possibly contribute to some of the things that we already discussed. Here we have variation one. We solidified the checkout buttons to a single button, and we added the banner. And of course, the winner with a 10.6% increase in website conversion was this uh, variation one. Now, again, it's a simple changes sometimes, cleaning up the page, making it look more presentable. But again, you want to increase scent. You want to ensure that the visitor can find the actual proceed to checkout button. And they're not distracted with anything else that may you know, give them pause or cause any type of anxiety to kind of move forward. And this is one thing that we were talking about with some of our team members earlier today. Uh, you know, if you do conversion optimization for as long as we've done it, you look at the page and subconsciously, right away, you can say, you know what, this is wrong. You know, you need to remove this banner. You need to, you need to, to add some value proposition over there. And, and although this is good, where, where science becomes second nature to you, we always have to emphasize that tweaks are good, uh, the suggestions that you're making are really good, but what is the method methodology that is behind that, that thought? Uh, instead of just telling me about all these different changes, no, let's start by saying on a cart page, what, regardless of the cart page, before I even actually see the cart page, what are the different things that I should be evaluating? And those are the three principle, uh, principles that IAT is covering. Those are the three main principles that we are covering today. So focus on the principles because they could be applied tremendously differently. The same principles can force you to add uh, trust icons, uh, credibility icons, assurances on a page, and the same principles can tell you to remove some of these trust factors from, from a page. So. It is the methodology, it is the careful analysis, that's really what matters. That's the essence of conversion optimization, where you move from increases in conversion rates, although we all love those increases in conversion rates, into actionable marketing insights that you can implement across all of your pl platforms, all your channels. Uh, that, that's really when you see a real value in conversion optimization. And, you know, Al I do want to mention, in our first case study that we presented when we had the Assurance Center, that was actually something that was very popular with one of our, our you know, partners, if you recall. So when we launched that and we actually wrote a case study about that experience, everybody started using the Assurance Center. I mean, it became a widespread phenomenon. Uh, and then, you know, the Assurance Center didn't work in this case. I mean, you saw with the case study, we had the Assurance Center, and it was not successful with this particular Definitely. Site. I mean, I think I, I recall, uh, for those of you guys who've been doing e-commerce for 10, 12 years, uh, first time, really, it was like a huge hit, Assurance Center. I think Internet Retailer did a whole feature about the Assurance Center, 33%, uh, 32% uh, uh, really increasing conversions based on adding an Assurance Center. And everybody just started doing it. So, um, you know, what worked for one, what worked for that particular customer, we've seen other customers, other partners who struggled and did not see the same results. Exactly. So the results again, uh, we saw this a 10.6% uh, increase. And, and again, you, when you look at the conversion rates, uh, they're higher than your average because, of course, this is a cart page. 
so increasing buyer momentum in the cart, as we said, we already went through the point of increasing page scent through decluttering. The second point is increasing trust, value, and urgency on the page through contributing elements and language. What does that mean? That could be through message, messaging through banners, more assurances through credibility icons, and social proof. All of these contribute to that. So here are some examples from uh, our partner 3M where we did include, again, credibility icons, uh, urgency, free shipping on the order, uh, just, again, making the page easier for the visitor to use. And, and we have to say, uh, I mean, we're always grateful to have some of these uh, these partners who are fully, fully committed to the process of conversion optimization, to the process of learning, to the process of looking for marketing insights for, for conversion optimization. And 3M has been uh, a long time, great, great partner. Uh, the team there uh, works, really, uh, really loves conversion optimization, is passionate about conversion uh, optimization. That allowed us to really do a lot of research, a lot of analysis with their website. It, it was highly collaborative. Uh, one of one, I think, continues to be one of the greatest experiences that that we've had. Absolutely, and here's another example for another partner that we had, where again the cart page with uh, some language that adds urgency, that adds that trust and confidence, uh, urging the customer to kind of move on from there. So not this. Is but that. Very good. And I see I see some tweets uh, coming. Thank you for those of you guys who are tweeting at us. Uh, we have some team members who are watching Twitter. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them to us uh, via the Invest CRO uh, tag, and we will be responsible. Uh, we will be responding to those as well. So, Ayat, I think you have about eleven more minutes before we jump into live optimization. So let's okay. go. <laughs> All right. So increasing buyer momentum uh, in the cart. So we said increasing page sent through decluttering, increasing trust, value, and urgency on the page through contributing elements and language. And the third one is mitigating FUDs through a stepped process. So this means a clearly defined steps, process, whatever it is. Uh, also, it could also mean visual indi progress indicators. Having that progress indicator at the top really helps the visitor. So not this, but that. So if you see in the second example, what we did was we added... Step one, you know, fill out your information. Step two, again, it's something that could be simple, but it does contribute to uh, increases in conversion. Not this, but that, again, uh, uh, indicator at the top, as well as a stepped process at the bottom, definitely always helps move the visitor forward. Very good. So uh, if you would go back to the previous, uh, previous slide, I have to say... Uh, has to be one of the uh, one of the ugliest checkout with uh, we love all of our, our partners and and we love the partnership but you know sometimes when you see pages like these um, it presents I mean it's, it's ugly so that's the bad news the good news is there is just a humongous chance for for improvement so I think this was one of the longest checkout forms single page checkout form and we stuck with the single page checkout form we didn't uh, we didn't change a whole lot uh, like you know we stuck with it but we've changed the formatting on it let the visitor know exactly what steps are there what they should expect uh, we always say let the visitors know exactly where to go next and that really helped also increase conversion rates tremendously absolutely uh, and and so here is kind of a summary of our points uh, first, the conversion correlation factor on a cart or checkout page is very high. Buyer momentum is high at a cart page level. However, visitor anxieties are equally high. Sometimes what we may perceive as elements that add trust and confidence actually only increase anxieties. The placement of credibility icons is key to increase conversion. The cart page is a point in which buyer momentum is high. Cart abandonment is many times due to the fact that anxieties that surface right away are not mi mitigated immediately. Three methods that contribute to cart abandonment and keep buyer momentum high, increasing scent through decluttering, increasing trust value and urgency on the page through contributing elements and language, and mitigating FUDs through a stepped process. Now, before before we jump into live optimization, uh, I see a question from uh, Ivan over here, which I think is an interesting question. It's actually a, perhaps a whole webinar, but we here, we'll sum it up in a minute. So uh, I add a question to you. Uh, I think our webinar attendees, or I even noticed that we like to duplicate uh, proceed to checkout buttons. Do we really like to do that? To have multiple proceed to checkouts at the top, at the bottom? Your thoughts? Um, for lots of the customers that, or lots of our partners that we've worked with, 
having more than one, depending on what type of a site they are, of course, could be very positive because, because again, a lot of times if they have a, a, cust a visitor comes to the site and only places one item in the cart, it's easy to see both buttons. They're clearly defined and it moves them forward faster. Yeah, again, so it's about giving the visitor, uh, trying to push them forward in the path that, that you want. And sometimes think about a lengthier cart. So I have the proceed to check out at the top. I have it at the bottom. Uh, remember also having... Uh, Usually you might want to allow or you should allow visitors to exit the cart because they have not started the checkout process. I want to continue and look at other items. But your items should not be equally weighted. You should not definitely not in close proximity to each other. Proceed to check out versus continue shopping. Uh, definitely not close proximity, not the same color. Uh, consider using visual like you know button for the proceed to check out versus text for the continue shopping. So there are different things that you can play with and you will see increases in conversion rates. And this all plays into, into FUDs, incentives, the uh, specifically continuity as well, all these different things. So they are particular from one, uh, one page to the, to the next. Exactly. And again, I think just going on Khaled's point, you want to make sure that you maintain buyer momentum. And that's what to proceed to check out button sometimes does. All right, so for more information, of course, you can purchase our book. You can look out for the emails because we will have webinars. We have these every couple of weeks, um, and it always has great information for you. So uh, we look forward to uh, joining you in the next one. Definitely. So um, uh, if you haven't read our book, uh, it's available on Amazon.com. Uh, it's actually uh, improving in, in the sales rank. It's been out for, for a little bit, but one of the earlier books on conversion optimization Conversion Optimization, The uh, Art and Science of Converting Prospects into uh, Customers. Uh, I am going to be actually speaking at a couple of uh, the upcoming conferences, SMX London, uh, so that will be exciting if you're in London. Um, definitely, let's, let's try and, and connect. Uh, it's sort of interesting when we look at our webinar attendees because they're coming from all over the place. I mean, we have people uh, attending from Turkey, we have people from the US, from Canada, uh, all, all over all over the place, um, and there are some very regular, so we appreciate our regular webinar attendees. We will have the slides coming uh, available to you by tomorrow, so you'll receive an email from us. Please feel free to share those slides with your colleagues, with your friends. Our goal is to build a community around com that, uh, that appreciates conversion uh, optimization. Uh, you will have the uh, YouTube recording of the webinar. Typically, we like to have it by Monday or Tuesday. With that, I think we can jump into uh, live optimization. So we've had many, many websites submitted to us. So Ayat, if you want to take us through some of the websites, and we can ask some of our webinar attendees, and I can read off uh, their, their comments. What do they think? So uh, we've, we've looked at cart pages since uh, we saw it's fitting, since we're talking about a cart page. So Exactly. So here is the first company. It's a company called Spark, and they offer uh, different mobile plans, different, uh, you know, uh, just uh, for business and personal. They all offer even like web plans. So, uh, you know, they have a, a whole slew of different things that they offer. Um, so we selected a phone, we went to the cart, and this is what we see. So I want to see... Where, where are they based, by the way? They're based in New Zealand. In New Zealand. So there you go. Uh, yeah, it's another, another country that we have. So uh, The red line just indicates that that is the fold so that you can kind of imagine what the cart looks like on uh, you know, your, your browser. Uh, so I want to get feedback from our listeners. Let us know, what do you think about this cart? Yeah, so you can use the Q&A feature on uh, GoToWebinar. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is it great? Can they improve upon it? Uh, what are your recommendations? Uh, we still have quite a bit of attendees, so I'd like to hear uh, from you guys. Uh, let's start reading some of the, uh, some of the answers. And uh, over here, uh, let's see, I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds and we start reading some of the answers. So Melanie says the page seems a little empty. Uh, Josh says uh, better pictures. How would it look with multiple products? Um, well, I'm not sure if people would be, I typically buy one cell phone, so <laughs> I haven't thought about having multiple, multiple phones. Well, they actually do offer an option to, I think, add accessories. So definitely I think that, that that point is valid in terms of of how would the page look if there were multiple items there. John says, uh, it should say secure cart, your secure cart as opposed to your cart. 
excellent. And let's see. Uh, needs trust icon uh, as well from, uh, from John. Uh, Dave, uh, payment options are not clear. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steve, uh, the shipping information is not available. All right, so I do want to remind the listeners, of course, this is a cart page, so uh, the billing is not, and the shipping information is at, probably at the next step. Um, but when we looked at this page and we evaluated it, we thought, uh, we don't know much about Spark, and if I was a new visitor and I don't know anything about this company, of course, remember, the anxieties are very high at the cart page level and at the checkout level, so you want to make sure you address that. And that could be sometimes even through just showing them about your value proposition. Who are you? Why are you better than the competitors? Why should they purchase a plan from you versus any other company? Definitely. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is you want to emphasize trust. Trust is always very critical also at any, uh, any point. So value, your value proposition needs to be very clear. And how value proposition is, is, is used is very critical. Sometimes value proposition is used through images, through the change of the copy in the cart page, a little bit of banners as well. You're re-emphasizing, you're having that continuity in the value proposition. So keep all these things in mind. Track your, your abandonment rate. Um, you should test each one of those elements one at a time. Uh, you should aim with a cart page. If you're able to increase conversions by three to five percent at each test, that impacts your bottom line directly. We're talking three to five percent right away. Um, a great area to, to start. All right, excellent. So we're going to go on to the next one. And this site is called Premium Seats USA. So they're based in the USA. <clears throat> and here is the dotted line, which indicates the fold again. So everything below that is below the fold. What are your thoughts, listeners? <laughs> Very good. So again, use the Q&A feature to send us some of your thoughts. And I'll just read some of the answers. We'll give you guys a couple of seconds. John is saying uh, cluttered. Uh, Steve is saying needs better design. Uh, Stephen, uh, Steve, sorry. Uh, Steve is saying, uh, let's see. Huh, I can't really. So, some of the comments sometimes I have a tough time reading. <laughs> um, so uh, Melanie says, uh, what's with the, uh, with the dollar, uh, dollars appearing there? It does not look too professional. Um, all, all of these are, are, are valid. So Exactly. And so when we talked about, uh, in, our, in our webinar, we talked about buyer momentum. You, you know, your visitor is here. They're ready to move forward. They're ready to get their seats for this great show, this Disney on ice. How exciting. Well, you know, number one is, of course, the, uh, there's lots of clutter on the page. There are some ads that are along the right side. Sometimes, you know, companies have those because they do generate uh, income and they do generate revenue for them. However, if it's going to impact your business, you do want to be very weary of that and how you present them. Um, on the right, on the left nav, of course, there's a chance for the visitor to just opt and leave. This is the cart page. You want to make sure that they're secured. They're in, they're continuing on to the next step. So those are just kind of some things that come to mind immediately when you see this page. All right, and we're going to go on to the third one, and this is blindsonline.com, and here you have the fold. Uh, actually, they did a good job putting both of the CTAs above the <laughs> fold there, <laughs> but of course, I did just uh, place one item in the cart. But anyways, go ahead, listeners, let us know what you think. What do you think of this page? Give us your feedback. So again... Um I, I like this page uh, compared to the other two pages. I don't know what you think, I had, but I think it's one of the uh, better pages that we have. So, Blinds Online, um, again, what are your thoughts about Blinds Online? Uh, let's use the Q&A feature and see what do you think of that feature? Um, how can we improve uh, upon it? Uh, I'd like to hear from our webinar attendees. Uh, use the Q&A feature. Um, and let me, let me read some of the answers. Uh, Steve uh, says the 10% off code. Uh, he likes to see that automatically filled. I agree to some extent, but that sometimes is a business decision. Uh, John uh, says uh, the, check the, the checkout button is not great. 
let's see. Mary says you should use proceed to checkout as opposed to checkouts. Uh, okay, that 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 also makes sense. I asked what what are your your thoughts? Okay, looking at blind, blinds online again, it's a simple clean kind of a page. But again, you want to make sure that the visitor knows who you are. So I would go back to, in, you know, doing more, uh, having more of an effort in enhancing your value and who you are and giving the visitor more confidence to kind of proceed to the next step. Because again, uh, even purchasing online, uh, blinds online is not a very easy process. So what kind of, um, you know, just what can you comfort your visitor with when they're at the cart page to kind of give them the momentum to move forward. Very good, excellent. So um, that, that's some of, that is some of the feedback that we, uh, we have for you. Um, with that, our webinar comes to an end. Uh, like I said, the slides, the YouTube is gonna be available to you. In the next few days, you'll receive an email from us. Please uh, feel free to uh, share it with your friends, with your colleagues, somebody who will benefit, somebody who's interested in learning more about conversion optimization. Uh, also, after we close the webinar, you are going to get a survey asking you about the webinar, what we can improve uh, on it. Uh, if you are interested in increasing conversion rates for your website, if you are interested in having our team uh, conduct some of the experiments with you, uh, learn. And if you're interested in learning more about the process of conversion optimization, the conversion framework, uh, our spe the specific formula, uh, which is uh, which uh, now is is uh, going through the process of being trademarked. If you're interested. In learning that, so please go ahead and, and fill, uh, give your contact information. Somebody from our team will reach out to you. Uh, we can have a discussion about, about your specific situation. Uh, again, we, we appreciate you guys taking the time to attend this webinar. We hope that you found it uh, helpful, the information presented well. And we'll talk to you, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys in the next couple of weeks with our next webinar.